Rick Bowman. Again? Rick Bowman. Uh, and you're with which department? Pierce County Sheriff's Department. Why'd you become a chaplain? <laughs> I felt like it was a calling that God uh, put on my heart, and uh, actually it was him that orchestrated the whole thing. It, was, it wasn't really my plan. I feel like it was God's plan, but I love being where the action is, and I love serving law enforcement officers. Uh, you, were in, you were in Vietnam? Yes, I was. Yeah. Um, did you um, get a little bit of training, uh, giving spiritual guidance to men at that time, or was this a no, I don't really think so. I, I think that uh, I got some training, but it wasn't really in giving spiritual guidance. I'd say that was, I call it spiritual boot camp, uh, about understanding uh, uh, combat stress and um, just uh, understanding a little about uh, what happens to somebody when they go through uh, trauma. But at that time, I wasn't even a believer, so... Is, is, is that what, uh, did you have a transformation while you were there? Or? No, it was long after that actually. It wasn't until I got back from Vietnam in 1968, and it wasn't until 1976 that I gave my life to the Lord, so it went a long time. Yeah. Uh, briefly describe your experience in Vietnam and, and what you've, what what do you take away from uh, what you've taken away from that, and uh, how, has it, how has it informed your life? Well, I was there for Tet of '68. I, I was uh, in firefights. I was in mortar attacks, mortars and rockets. Uh, we had our perimeter uh, penetrated by a battalion of uh, sappers. Uh, Viet Cong, NVA, um, and so uh, I experienced combat firsthand. I saw people die, and I think it was kind of a good education for me in understanding what people go through when they're under stress, when they're under the gun, and so I took away from it uh, a lot of understanding, which I feel has been beneficial for me with law enforcement because um, it kind of I, I have an idea of what they're going through when they're in stressful situations or in a shootout or something like that. Um, what, what was it like the first time someone shot at you? Do you know, it's funny because I, I actually have people, a lot of times I'm talking to cops or soldiers, either a cop that's uh, new, new on the job or a soldier that's getting ready to deploy. And I think that the question that somebody always has is, is how am I going to react? And the thing that I always tell them, you'll react exactly as you've been trained to do. So it's so ingrained in you by the training that you have that at the time you don't have time to stop and think about what's happening to you. You only have time to stop and think about what you need to do to respond to it. Um, when you got back to the States, what was your, uh, what was your experience? Did you have a hard time adjusting or was there? Actually I did. I, I didn't really realize it. I had 10 months left in the Marine Corps when I got back from Vietnam, so I, I was still in for a while, but every night uh, I was out partying and I actually began some really self-destructive behavior. I, I was drinking a lot after I got out of the Marine Corps, although I held down a regular job. When I wasn't working, I was either drinking or smoking funny stuff and chasing women, and I was very self-destructive. I, uh, I didn't talk about Vietnam. I didn't watch any of the movies, so I kind of stuck my head in the sand and tried to pretend like it didn't exist, that it was just uh, past history. I, I uh, tried to put it behind me and uh, not deal with uh, any of the repercussions of it. 